And when I saw that, it's like, Tiffany, if you had a husband like mine, you may not have two DUIs. Monique is not only famous for her Oscar-winning performance in Precious, but also for how, in her signature no-nonsense style, vocalizes her experiences especially with Hollywood big shots. So when Monique decided to expose shocking details about Tiffany Haddish's past, she went all out. What ugly side did she unearth? From attacking her drunk driving to grooming allegations, Monique left no stone unturned. Monique calls Tiffany Haddish a groomer. This seat, tell I was like, you might want to have another Look, example. This seat make you go truth, tell it. No, tell the damn truth. God damn it, tell the truth. A battle of words between two renowned comedians, Monique and Tiffany Haddish, led to some pretty hefty accusations being thrown around. Haddish, who is known for being quick-witted and loud, which often lands her in more trouble than good, seemed to have ruffled Monique's feathers. Monique, on the other hand, has more than once proved that she is not one to be silenced or undermined. She often uses different platforms to shed light on the injustices and dirty business she's seen. What really happened between these two comedians that led to Monique calling out Tiffany Haddish for grooming? Back in 2018, Academy Award-winning actress and comedian Monique called for a boycott of Netflix after being offered a fraction of what other comedians have been paid for their comedy specials. This pay dispute had sparked a conversation in what the comedian described as gender and color bias in the entertainment industry. It was alleged that for their Netflix special, comedians Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock got $20 million, while Amy Schumer got $11 million. When it came to Monique, Netflix offered her $500,000 for her comedy special. Despite Monique's woes, Tiffany Haddish was also presented a deal by Netflix and she continued her reign as she signed the deal. When asked about her take on Monique calling for a Netflix boycott because she was allegedly lowballed, Haddish made a questionable comment to GQ about Monique's husband, Sidney Hicks. Haddish said, My business run different than her business. I don't live her life. I don't have that husband of hers. Monique felt offended by this comment. Ignoring it at the time, Monique went ahead and congratulated Haddish on her accomplishment, despite her own battles with the streaming platform. But fast forward to 2024, Monique has something else to say. According to her, Haddish might be better off with someone like Hicks, bringing up Haddish's child grooming allegations. It was alleged that Haddish and her fellow comic Ari Spears recruited two young actors to perform inappropriate acts on camera when they were children. If you had a husband like mine, you may not be caught up in what looks like you could have been grooming a child. So how did this exactly happen? How did Tiffany Haddish find herself entangled in such a murky situation? In the world of comedy, Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears are household names, known for their wit and humor. But behind the laughter lies a dark and disturbing secret. In 2022, a lawsuit was filed by Jane Doe and her younger brother John Doe, and shocking allegations of child sexual abuse were leveled against the two comedians. Jane Doe, 22 years old, and her brother John, who's 15 years old, came forward with their harrowing experiences, recounting how they were recruited by Haddish and Spears to perform inappropriate acts on camera when they were minors. The siblings, who adopted pseudonyms to protect their identities, bravely stepped forward to shed light on the dark underbelly of the comedy industry. The first incident detailed in the lawsuit took place when Jane was just 14 years old. It was during a comedy camp where Haddish appeared as a guest speaker. Little did Jane know that this encounter would change her life forever. Haddish approached her and mentioned a perfect role she had in mind for her, her very own commercial. Intrigued and unaware of what lay ahead, Jane agreed to participate. Neither Jane Jane nor her mother knew what the shoot would entail, according to the lawsuit. Only Haddish and Spears, who was also on hand to produce the video, are said to have known the plot. Jane and John's mother alleges that she and Haddish met through comedy and bonded over a shared source of strife. We were both going through a divorce, messy, 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 messy divorces. We just got really, really super, super close, she confessed to the press. According to the lawsuit, Haddish called the family for every birthday and every Christmas. The sibling's mother noted that for years, Haddish reliably checked in, whether that be from a movie set or overseas. Having won the family's trust, Haddish had a plan to set up Jane and John on a bright Hollywood journey. On the day of the shoot, Jane and her mother had no idea what they were about to witness. Only Haddish and Spears, who was also present, knew the true nature of the shoot. In the recording booth, Jane was shown a video clip that seemed innocuous at first, a group of co-eds arguing over a Subway sandwich. But as the video progressed, it took a disturbing turn. The co-eds began eating the sandwich in a suggestive manner, moaning and making sexual noises that simulated the act of fellatio. Shocked and disgusted, Jane watched in silence as Spears instructed her to mimic what she had seen on the screen, including the explicit noises. Nervous and uncomfortable, Jane complied, but deep down she knew something was terribly wrong. As if that wasn't horrifying enough, 
Haddish then took it upon herself to verbally explain in explicit detail what was expected of Jane. She showed her how to perform fellatio, demonstrating the movements, noises, moaning, and groaning. Jane, physically, emotionally, and mentally uncomfortable, followed Haddish's instructions, but her discomfort was evident. I tried to mimic what they wanted me to mimic, but it still came out just super uncomfortable. I knew when I left the booth that I didn't complete what they wanted me to do, Jane told the press. After the ordeal, Haddish paid Jane $100 and sent her home. Jane, still reeling from the traumatic experience, tried to shrug it off, not confiding in her mother or anyone else about how weird she felt. She couldn't comprehend the gravity of the situation at the time, but deep down, she knew that something was deeply wrong. A year later, Haddish approached the family once again, this time with a similar pitch for Jane's younger brother, John. She claimed that John would be filming a sizzle reel for Nickelodeon, a dream opportunity for any young child. Trusting Haddish, the family agreed, unaware of the horrors that awaited them. The shoot took place in Spears' home and it was there that Haddish's behavior towards Jane and John took a sinister turn. Once separated from their mother, Haddish's true colors were revealed. She became mean and aggressive, a stark contrast to her previous interactions with Jane. It was as if a switch had been flipped. According to the lawsuit, the children were separated during the shoot. Jane recalled that Haddish told her to remain on a couch downstairs while her brother's shoot took place upstairs. During the shoot, John was subjected to a series of inappropriate actions and gestures by Spears, who played the role of a pedophile. John, clad only in his underwear, was leered at through two holes cut into a newspaper he pretended to read. The camera zoomed in suggestively on his buttocks and crotch, while Spears sprayed baby oil onto his back and massaged it into his shoulders. In one scene, John played with a train in a manner that suggested phallic masturbation. In another, Spears observed the child nude in a bathtub and poured water on his feet. The video ended with John peering at his babysitter through a newspaper, rubbing baby oil on his shirtless shoulder, and a chilling on-screen text that read, Watch who you leave your kids with. Once filming ended, the lawsuit stated that Jane was alarmed that her younger brother came back downstairs, red in the face, crying his eyes out, just bawling out in tears. The young girl felt scared not knowing what had happened to her brother. When that happened, the only thing I could feel was how I felt in my video with Tiffany. I didn't know at the time if anything happened with him like what had happened to me, but I just felt like something wasn't right with that moment. Jane added John Doe, then called his mother crying, saying he did not want to film anymore. The sibling's mother was immediately alarmed when she received the phone call from her crying son, and the answer she allegedly received from Haddish did little to reassure her. She said something to the effect of, I don't think acting is for him, and I'm like, what if you mean acting isn't for him? My son is crying, like, what is going on? The mother recalled the sibling's mother allegedly spent the next week contacting Spears and asking to see the footage of her son. Spears allegedly kept repeating that it had not yet been edited. Eventually, the lawsuit states that Spears claimed John had been so uncooperative that his footage had been deemed unusable and subsequently deleted. Four years later, however, a gossip website, Bossip, published an article about Spears that described the sketch. It was then, for the first time, that John's mother said she became aware of what had actually been filmed. The sibling's mother described that knowing what she had exposed her children to, she felt all the trauma, anxiety, and depression, shame, and fear were triggered. To find out that she had violated such a sacred trust, I trusted her with my children. That is what pushed me over the edge. She described her ordeal. The aftermath of these traumatic experiences left lasting scars on Jane and John. Jane struggled to trust people and even developed a social disorder that prevented her from socializing. She carried remorse, knowing that she was only a few feet away when Spears was molesting her seven-year-old brother in the other room. As for John, the impact had been equally devastating. He no longer trusts adults and refuses to be recorded or photographed, fearing that he may once again become a victim of abuse. He also allegedly places band-aids over the cameras on all of his electronics due to an ongoing fear of being watched and recorded. His life became confined to his room, where he felt safe from the outside world. The lawsuit filed by Jane Doe and her brother listed eight causes of action against Haddish and Spears including intentional infliction of emotional distress, gross negligence, sexual battery, sexual harassment, sexual abuse of a minor. Haddish was further accused of negligent supervision, failure to warn, breach of fiduciary duty, and constructive fraud. The lawsuit seek both general and special damages, as well as any appropriate statutory damages. The lawsuit stated that the sibling's mother tried to reach a $15,000 settlement with Spears in 2019, but that agreement allegedly did not bind Haddish, who the complaint alleges insinuated that she wanted no part of the Spears settlement agreement via text. Neither did it cover the siblings, who had no guardian ad litem present to represent their interests as minors. Jane took over as John's guardian around the end of 2019 or start of 2020 due 
into a cascading series of traumatic personal issues that impacted their mother's mental and physical health. She has also enrolled both herself and her brother in therapy, according to the lawsuit. Included in the complaint is a statement John wrote during his treatment, saying that the pedophile sketch me up bad. Despite what the lawsuit claims, Funny or Die said they had no involvement in creating the video. In a statement to TMZ, they said, Funny or Die found this video absolutely disgusting and would never produce such content. We were not involved with the conceptualization, development, funding, or production of this video. It was uploaded to the site as user-generated content and was removed in 2018 immediately after becoming aware of its existence. The shocking allegations against Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears sent shockwaves through the comedy industry. To clear out her name, Tiffany Haddish's attorney, Andrew Brettler, denied all charges relating to child sexual abuse being leveled at the comedian. He described the lawsuit as an extortion attempt. He said, Plaintiff's mother, Triza Morris, has been trying to assert these bogus claims against Miss Haddish for several years. Brettler also suggested that the mother and daughter who made the allegations had their attempts to file a lawsuit with different lawyers didn't go well when the different lawyers, once it became clear that the claims were meritless. He further added that Miss Haddish would not be shaken down. Miss Morris had her adult daughter representing herself in the lawsuit. Brettler warned them, saying, the two of them will together face the consequences of pursuing this frivolous action. The lawsuit was later dropped by Jane Doe. According to court documents, the plaintiff asked the judge to dismiss the case with prejudice, meaning it cannot be refiled again. Jane Doe also issued a statement saying, my family and I have known Tiffany Haddish for many years, and we now know that she would never harm me or my brother or help anyone else do anything that could harm us. We wish Tiffany the best, and are glad that we can all put this behind us. Despite Tiffany clearing her name, she said it didn't seem she saw it that way because she later confessed that she's lost everything in the wake of the accusations, even despite the lawsuit being dismissed. Tiffany Haddish's other lawsuits. Monique's response to Tiffany Haddish's comments wasn't just limited to grooming accusations, she also touched on Haddish's endless troubles with the law. The beloved comedian and actress known for her infectious laughter and unforgettable performances has made headlines for all the wrong reasons. In January 2022, Haddish was arrested in Beverly Hills. Law enforcement sources said the entertainer was found asleep behind the wheel of her car while in the middle of a street. Undoubtedly, 2022 was a tough year for Haddish. The comedian had opened up about the end of her relationship with rapper Common, and it turns out their breakup was far from mutual. Well, I can say this, Jimmy. Okay. I've been praying to God to send me a new man, a good man. <laughs> and um, God went ahead and sent me four in a uniform. According to Haddish, her relationship with Common was the healthiest and funnest she had ever experienced. She felt safe and secure, cherishing every moment they spent together. However, as time went on, Haddish noticed a change in Common's behavior. He became increasingly withdrawn, leaving her feeling confused and concerned. It was a stark contrast to the loving and attentive partner she had known. The turning point came when Common failed to invite Haddish to three significant events in his life. First, there was a concert in New York, a city known for its vibrant music scene. Haddish, who is a music, a lover herself, couldn't understand why she wasn't included in this special night. Next, Common attended a birthday party for none other than former President Barack Obama. It was a star-studded affair filled with influential figures from the world of politics and entertainment. Haddish, who had been a vocal supporter of Obama, felt left out and wondered why she wasn't by Common's side on such an important occasion. To add insult to injury, Common even excluded Haddish from his own birthday celebration. It was a personal milestone for him, a time to celebrate with loved ones. But Haddish found herself on the outside looking in, questioning where she stood in their relationship. It was at this point that Common made a phone call that would change everything. He reached out to Haddish and delivered the heartbreaking news that their relationship had run its course. Haddish was taken aback as she had believed their love was strong and enduring. In her own words, Haddish revealed, it wasn't mutual. It was more him saying, I think this relationship has run its course. And I was like, okay, like, you're gonna be a 50-year-old single man, okay? The shock and disappointment in her voice were palpable. Common's previous statement about their breakup being mutual now seemed questionable. Haddish's perspective shed new light on the situation, leaving fans wondering what truly led to the demise of their once enviable relationship. As of now, Common has not responded to Haddish's version of events. But in a 2021 interview with Hollywood Unlocked, he did mention that the challenges of pandemic lockdowns and the aftermath played a role in their breakup. He acknowledged that their busy schedules prevented them from giving their relationship the attention it deserved. However, 
Haddish's revelations left fans with more questions than answers. Was Common's withdrawal a result of external factors, or was there something deeper at play? And what does the future hold for these two talented individuals? But Haddish wasn't just dealing with the heartbreak. She had just recently been working through emotions following the losses she had experienced, including the recent deaths of her grandmother, her pet dog, and her close friend and music producer, Carl Craig. But it seemed the sudden death of fellow comedian Bob Saget that set her off. Haddish expressed her deep sadness over this. I'm just sad because I've had some losses, she said. I'm very emotional. I've been crying a lot because it's that's my heart. My dog was my heart. And the other people who passed, you know, they were my rocks. They had my back. I mean, they taught me a lot, so I lost the physical, but I'm sure I got them in the spiritual. Bob Sajay died at the age of 65. The comedian was reportedly found dead in his hotel room at the Ritz-Carlton in Orlando on a Sunday afternoon following a performance in Jacksonville. Amidst these personal tragedies, the news of Sajay's passing had left her devastated. Reflecting on her first encounter with Sajay, Haddish recounted a moment that took place at a comedy camp. It was a pivotal moment in her career, one that she will never forget. Haddish vividly remembers stepping onto the stage to perform her jokes, feeling a mix of excitement and nerves. Little did she know that this performance would mark the beginning of a lifelong connection with Sajay. As Haddish took the stage, Sajay entered the room, his presence commanding attention. He observed Haddish's performance, recognizing her talent and potential. After her set, Sajay approached her with words of wisdom that would shape her comedic journey. He commended her on her performance, acknowledging the quality of her jokes. However, he also offered a crucial piece of advice that would stay with Haddish throughout her career. Good. That's good. Now keep the time, Sajay said, emphasizing the importance of sticking to the allotted time for her performance. Haddish had gone over her three-minute time limit, eager to share her entire story. Sajay recognized her passion and desire to connect with the audience, but reminded her of the significance of time management in the world of comedy. Haddish recalled Sajay's words echoing in her mind. It was a lesson that went beyond the stage, teaching her the importance of discipline and professionalism. Sajay's advice served as a guiding principle for Haddish, reminding her to respect the audience's time and deliver her best within the given time frame. The impact of Sajay's advice extended far beyond that initial encounter. Haddish's career soared to new heights, and she became a force to be reckoned with in the comedy world. Sajay's guidance and mentorship played a significant role in her success, instilling in her the confidence to pursue her dreams and stay true to her comedic voice. In the wake of Sajay's passing, Haddish took to Instagram to pay tribute to her mentor and friend. Alongside a photo of them together on the set of TBS Friday Night Vibes, Haddish expressed her deep sorrow and gratitude. She described Sajay as one of her first great teachers, someone who made her feel safe, worthy, and most importantly, made her laugh. Haddish's tribute showcased the profound impact Sajay had on her life and the immense love and respect she had for him. With all these emotions happening in a very short span, no wonder the comedian fell asleep under the wheel. Cops said that they received a call by another driver reporting Haddish had fallen asleep at the wheel of her car. Officers were able to track down Haddish, who had apparently woken up and continued driving. The police claimed she was pulling into a neighborhood when they stopped her for a DUI, an improper stopping on a roadway. The officers reportedly claimed to have smelled marijuana inside the vehicle. Haddish was transported to the Fayette County Sheriff's Office, where she was behind bars for a few hours. She was released after posting a bond of $1,666, but that wasn't the last Tiffany would have a run with the law. Late 2023, she was arrested again for another DUI. On November 24th, the beloved comedian and actress was taken into custody after being found asleep behind the wheel in the affluent enclave of Beverly Hills. The shocking news of Haddish's arrest spread like wildfire, leaving fans and industry insiders stunned. Haddish, known for her candid and hilarious personality, was charged with two misdemeanors, driving under the influence of alcohol and driving with a blood alcohol level of at least 0.08%. These charges carry serious consequences, but Haddish, true to her nature, didn't let it dampen her spirit. Tiffany found humor in the situation. I'm sorry, but you ain't lived till you got arrested in Beverly Hills. It's beautiful over there. I've been in quite a few jails. And if you're going to do something, I say get arrested over there because that jail is nice. She said on stage during a Thanksgiving night feast at the comedy club. During her recent Christmas set at the Laugh Factory, Haddish addressed her arrest with her trademark humor. She confidently stated it's clear that she had chosen to find the silver lining in this unexpected situation. Despite the seriousness of the charges, Haddish managed to bring lightness to the situation, even going as far as describing the Beverly Hills jail as a surprisingly pleasant experience. She raved about the cleanliness of the facility and the amenities provided to inmates. Haddish even shared a humorous anecdote about starting her menstrual cycle in jail and jokingly praised the quality of the maxi pads available. They had the best maxi pads. Tiffany joked that they were so large she could use an additional one as a pillow. I did that. I took a nap. It was beautiful. 
Mm hmm. It was a wonderful experience, she said. The news of Haddish's arrest quickly spread, capturing the attention of media outlets worldwide. Her arrest was covered extensively, with headlines highlighting the shocking nature of the incident. Haddish's ability to address the situation with humor and grace is a testament to her resilience and unique perspective on life. The comedian pleaded not guilty to both charges during her December 20th arraignment. Well, Monique was not afraid to call her out after she disrespected her and her husband. Will Tiffany Haddish clap back? Only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.